Comedians notoriously hate award Whoa! shows, Whoa! and celebrities you. hate Thank you. What's this? Because the comedians yeah, that's a can't resist the opportunity to get on stage and belittle celebrities during their night of highest honor. But the fans love these spectacles because we get to sit back and watch the chaos. Yeah. Relax, I'm going to try and be nice. Your global megastars with amazing talent, most of you. A few of you just married well. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> We, we all do. We all do. Today we are going to take a look at some of the funniest, most savage, and painfully awkward moments that have come from comedians at award shows. Starting with Jerry Seinfeld, who exposed these ceremonies for what they truly are. Comedy legend Jerry Seinfeld bluntly explained his hatred for award shows while he accepted the Comedian Award presented by HBO in 2007. You don't give awards to comedians. <laughs> First of all, comedians don't need awards. Awards are for people that are looking for work. We're not looking for work. Jerry opens with an interesting point. Comedians will not sell more tickets to their stand-up performances based on some pretentious award because being funny is subjective. Okay. However, in cinema, receiving an accolade will make producers and directors more interested in hiring an award-winning actor in future films for obvious creative and marketing reasons. You know, I don't know why we're so fascinated with actors in this culture. They haven't got a thought in their stupid bedhead hairdo mini brains. Why? We must honor this man. Why? He pretended to be Bob Johnson. <laughs> Playing dress up and pretend is not genius, ladies and gentlemen. It's not genius. <laughs> Roll the cameras, put on these clothes, stand there, ready? Say what we told you to say. <laughs> Fantastic. He did it! Give this man a huge golden trophy! He's a goddamn genius! As an actor himself, I'm sure Jerry is actor. just joking here. However, comedians are often writers, directors, producers, and performers of their he own was not material. A very good actor. Ironically, it kind of makes them more deserving of these esteemed awards. And secondly, and even more important, is um, your whole career as a comedian like half of is his about show, he's like making a fun of pretentious, kind of high minded, self congratulatory BS great show. events like this one. <laughs> But he was not very good. The whole feeling in this room of reverence and honoring is the exact opposite of everything I have wanted my life to be about. Now him clearly expressing the disdain for these ceremonies might come as a surprise to you, but comedians before and after him have felt the exact same hatred. Like Don Rickles, who paved the way for comedians after him to unapologetically say what's on their mind. I am so excited to get this Kakamemi Award. While you may think it's disrespectful to just make fun of an award you're being honored for, it's hard to take it seriously when there are so many award awards, shows that, that you can't even keep track of them. Yeah, you have the Golden award. Globes, the Emmys, the Grammys, Directors Guild of America Awards, the BAFTA Did Awards, you? Screen Actors Guild Awards, Producers Guild of America Awards, Writers Guild of America Awards, the Oscars, MTV Video Music Awards, BET Awards, American Music Awards, and that's not even all of them. These people spend more time the celebrating than they do creating. Kind of, uh, Experience. This wonderful TV Land award, award and uh, <laughs> whoever designed it is a moron. Now I'm sure you all know the typical structure of these events. One person will be the host of the entire night, but different celebrities will take the stage to present each award. Usually these celebs read their lines off teleprompters, and often they are reading bad jokes that someone else wrote with terrible delivery. We're here to present the VMA to the best group, and we love everything that has to do with groups. Yeah. Group therapy, group hugs, groupies. Very exciting for both of us because we're both nominated. Uh, actually, James, I'm not nominated tonight. Oh, come on, Ann, don't be so modest. <laughs> no, I'm not modest, I'm just not nominated. It used to be, you get naked, you get nominated. <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore which made Don's subtle jab about reading from the teleprompter that much funnier. Let's read these funny lines they wrote for us. Okay. Don then goes on <laughs> to sarcastically laugh at the jokes. First, it's a thrill to be matched up at the Emmy Awards with Mr. Warp himself, Don Rickles. The world hasn't seen a pairing like this since John McCain and Sarah Palin. <laughs> 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 It's the deep layers He's of so irony funny. that make Don's delivery so good. These celebrities know award shows are pompous. They also know Don isn't afraid to call them out on their bullshit. 
Yet even before he can get the jokes out, they already laugh and applaud the comic legend. But don't you dare try to interrupt one of his punchlines. Oh, Julia Roberts, you live next to me at the beach, you know that. <laughs> Thanks for all the visits. Anyway, uh, I'm living about two blocks from you. The broad never shows up. Come by and say hello. Closer than two blocks. <laughs> you have no lines, Julia, just nod. <laughs> Anyway, uh. And even if the entire ceremony is dedicated to one person, like when Martin Scorsese received a tribute for the AFI Life Achievement Award, Don Rickles will humble them. Marty, you are the most I never heard of this guy before today. <laughs> Little guy, he's the kind of guy in prison was the squealer all the time. <laughs> Pulling on your pants like going, let's do it again. Marty, when we see all the films you did, None of them were great. <laughs> but if you feel bad for Martin, don't worry. Clint Eastwood got the same treatment the previous year. Clint, I say it, nobody else has said it, and I say it from my heart. You're a lousy actor. <laughs> this is why you can never get too comfortable at these gatherings. Like when David Mann was, was presenting at the Neighborhood Awards and Lavelle Crawford caught a stray fat joke. Anybody got some chicken, an extra piece of chicken? <laughs> Lavelle, I know you got it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, leave Lavelle alone. Off. We cover that side of the audience up. <laughs> I think we can all agree that the best moments come from the host directly sniping one of oh, the members of the audience. That. It's a big year for Jack. He also got in a hot tub with Kathy Bates. Who? But hey, who hasn't? Chat, I gotta tell you a little secret about me. I, I didn't really give a shit about Hollywood, like my whole entire time growing up. And I did not give a shit about who the people were in Hollywood, so I'm gonna be sitting here going, who? Like 90% of the time? Like I didn't give any, <laughs> like I have no idea who half of these people are, or even more. So don't get upset if I don't know your actor, or I have no idea what they were in. Cause like uh for real I I I, I like a uh, I was like a goth kid, you know. Uh, I was like fuck the system. <laughs> I was in rock music and skateboarding. <laughs> okay, Eva Mendez is a different breed of beautiful. One of the most savage roasts came from Amy Poehler at the 2013 Golden Globes. She introduced director Catherine Bigelow, who was oh. previously married to famous director James Cameron. Oh. Catherine was nominated for Best Director for the film Zero Dark Thirty, which Never received a ton of criticism for glorifying CIA torture in the film. I haven't really been following the controversy over Zero Dark Thirty, but when it comes to torture, I trust the lady who spent three years married to James Cameron. Amy has built herself a reputation for kind of being a roast master. Yes, Matt Damon is here for Behind the Candelabra. Where are you, Matt? <laughs> Matt, on any other night in any other room, you would be a big deal. But tonight, and don't take this the wrong way, you're basically a garbage person. Oh. Oh, and Tina Fey is damn good, too. Gravity is nominated for Best Film. Never seen it. It's the story of how George Clooney would rather float away into space and die than spend one more minute with a woman his own age. <laughs> but sometimes making <laughs> jokes about celebrities doesn't always go over well. Like the time Sarah Silverman made fun of Britney Spears' children at the 2007 Whoa, VMAs. Whoa, your children, don't but do that. have you seen Britney's kids? Oh my God, they are the most adorable mistakes you will ever see. They are so cute. They're, they're as cute as the hairless vagina they came out of. I'm, what? I'm serious. They're this cute, you guys. The audience didn't think this joke was very funny, but this was back in 2007 when the internet didn't have a full force grip on everyone's lives, so nobody was tweeting their outrage against Sarah. That was not the case for Bill funny. Burr, who made a bunch of jokes at the 2021 Grammys pre-show that, that caused uproar online. After a beautiful piano solo I don't from even mind Igor that kind Levitt, of humor. Bill I just was brought it was on stage boring. and said this. How are you? 
Was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? Critics exploded online, oh, scolding damn. Bill for making such a distasteful joke during a night of honor and praise. Little did critics know, it was only going to get worse. Bill immediately followed up by making fun of the Grammys pre-show as he thought he was going to be hosting the actual Grammys, only for him to show up to an empty Hollywood set presenting awards to a handful of producers and a few thousand people watching on the internet. <laughs> I bought a suit for this! I thought I was gonna be on TV! I'm such a moron! I am losing so much money right now. For some reason, they had Bill, a white man from Boston with absolutely no musical talent or knowledge, present all of the Latin music awards and nominees. All right. Hey, how many uh, feminists are like going nuts? So how, why is this this white male doing all this Latino stuff? And he unsurprisingly butchered just about every name. I can't say this name. Natalie, Natalie, what? All right. Uh, <laughs> and the winner of uh, the Grammy goes to Natalia Lafourcade. And the Grammy goes to Conde. Gustavo Dudamel, conducting the Los Angeles Philharmonic. I will be accepting the Grammy on behalf of Gustavo Dudamel. Congratulations. Crush that one. And the Grammy goes to Frederick Valentine. Why'd they have this guy do it? Uh, Angel Blue, Dead Sea Graves. Because of people's outrage, some comedians don't think it's worth it to host anymore. Like Kevin Hart, who decided to drop out of hosting the Academy Awards after Probably he was attacked best. on Twitter for his unsavory humor. Kevin Hart was announced to be the host of the 2019 Oscars, and immediately Twitter erupted, where detractors posted a series of old homophobic tweets. Nearly all of them were just really bad jokes that seem relatively menial. However, one stood out more than most. Kevin Hart tweeted, Yo, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my voice, stop, that's gay. Critics also resurfaced an old joke from his iconic 2010 comedy special, Seriously Funny. I'm gonna tell you guys one of my biggest fears. One of my biggest fears is my son growing up and being gay. Hey, stop, that's gay, it's quick. Kevin had apologized for these previous words in 2012. In 2015, he also addressed using gay jokes in his film, Get Hard. Did you think? This is mildly mean spirited, or at the very least, a little bit. 2012 is like I way to early myself, to say. This is funny. This is not, uh, you know, that wasn't appropriate of me. He's changed, he changed pretty early, actually. Within 48 hours of the host announcement, a lot of people are still, given an are still like rude about I was given an ultimatum. Kevin, apologize, but we're going to have to find another host. So he ultimately decided to step down. Kevin did not host the Oscars and said recently in 2024 that he would never consider it ever again. Those gigs aren't good gigs for comics. It's no shot to the Oscars, no shot to the Globes or anything else. Those just aren't comedy friendly environments anymore. Many people like Kevin believe that comedy really is early. under a microscope a lot of these days, not. but it isn't even just everyday people online that get offended. Sometimes it's the A-list stars who, even oh, though they are in the entertainment industry themselves, get offended. Like I've noticed that Tom Hanks always has a sour look on his face. Anyone in the audience not laughing is terrified of being next. One A-lister who did not like being the butt of the joke was Jada Pinkett Smith, and her husband's reaction stamped one of the craziest award show moments of all time. During the 2022 Oscars, Chris Rock was presenting the award for Best Documentary Feature. Naturally, he opened with some jokes. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both... <laughs> <laughs> I saw her and all I thought was <laughs> Will Smith's husband. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't help but think about it. It was making me laugh too hard. It was so silly. Now, if she <laughs> loses, he can't win. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> he is praying that Will Smith wins. Like, please. Everything was going great until he transitioned to a joke about Jada Pinkett. Now, Chris had a joke during the 2016 Oscars about Jada that the crowd loved. Jada's going to boycott the Oscars. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. I wasn't invited. 
Ironically, this joke was joke. way harsher than the one he was about to deliver. Really? Chris made a joke about Jada, who has spoken openly about having alopecia, a hair loss condition. Chris compared Jada to Lieutenant Jordan O'Neill, the star of G.I. Jane, notorious for her short, buzz-cut hairstyle. Based on Jada's expression, she did not like the joke. Will, on the other hand, was laughing. It's unclear <laughs> if he was trying to mask his anger by laughing, or if he genuinely thought the joke was funny. But then the camera cuts back to Chris, and we can see Will storming the stage until he ultimately smacks Chris in the face. He sits back in his seat and yells at Chris, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. The deafening silence in the room permeated when the audience realized this was not scripted, and Chris tried to make sense of what just happened. This encounter made comedians hate award shows even more because Will faced zero repercussions for his actions. He was not kicked out, he was not spoken to by the show organizers. In fact, he won his first Oscar for Best Actor later on in the evening. He gave a five minute speech rambling and crying about how God is calling him to love people and to protect people. He Yo, but he's also in kind of an abusive relationship so it's like of course he's gonna have a lot of emotion toward like his feelings like right isn't he in an abusive relationship isn't that the bald lady like really mean like she cheats on him puts him on blast on her podcast like she he's like straight up in an abusive relationship of course he's like mentally mentally broken she's fucking yeah his her his husband is real fucked up like she's like a horrible lady Yeah, the uh, anyway, she's a, she's a she's a real bitch. I feel bad because uh it always seemed like Will Smith was like a really chill uh he's like a really he seemed like a really chill dude. But Wait, what? His wife slept with his f son's friend? No! What? No. That's real? Okay, she's a she's straight up an abuser. She, uh, you know what, you know what? I bet you anything. She gave the the I'm gonna beat you after this look, and he went up there and had to make a, a show. There's a video about it. He received a standing Damn. ovation with Hollywood actors crying in support of him. The standing ovation made me realize how detached Hollywood is from reality. Or maybe how attached Hollywood is and aware of his situation. Like he 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 seems to be going through it. Will Smith, the, uh, you know, he's like a, he was like a, a what is it called? Uh, somebody that the world admires um, in, in like the acting business, like a, like an idol almost. Like a, he's like an idol, right? Within the acting world. And then, uh. He put it in reacts the icon. Slap. He's like an icon. The incident yeah. is likely why we got the extremely safe and not edgy Jimmy Kimmel to host the awards for the next two years. And they were about as like funny Jimmy as Kimmel. you could imagine. Christopher is joined by his longtime collaborator, Killian Murphy, who is just wonderful. Killian is... He chose her over Margot Robbie? I fucking hate com... No offense, Lexus, uh, Alexis X. Uh, I don't like comments like this. I think that it's stupid because you're really just looking at a, um, you're looking at the way somebody looks and not the personality of the person. Yeah, of course, his husband is a real piece of shit, right? But at the same time, Margot Robbie could be a piece of shit. Like that, that has nothing. Their personality should be what is really, really the fuck, uh, the the real thing that you're thinking about, not not the way that they look. Like I find those those comments so fucked. For like, uh, because, and you're good. I, I'm just calling, calling it out mostly because, uh, uh, it's, a, I think it's an important thing to say. I think what you said really is a thing that people just look past very often. Uh, uh the, the, the re, it's like really, really true that people will go, oh, they could have had this person and look at how sexy that person is. Well, who gives a fuck how sexy they are after a fucking two weeks of being with that person in your house? You're going to have to give a you're going to have to get over the fact that they're very sexy and you're going to have to deal with the fact that they are uh, crazy. And I think that we all know from what happened with uh, the guy who was in um, Pirates of the Caribbean. And his, and his, uh, and the shipbed girl, you know? Like, you could have a very attractive girlfriend 
who's fucking insane. So it, I don't think it matters. A set, a set, a, I think it matters enough that you are attracted to a person. But at the end of the day, you might just have a shitbed girl who just shits in your bed when you upset them. You know? Now, Will Smith's husband is also a piece of shit. You sleep with your son's kid and you're, you're a real fucking disgusting... You sleep with your, your kid's friend and you're a real disgusting person. Not your son's kid. That's, that's weird. <laughs> that's especially weird. <laughs> that's a Kekona weird. You know, who are you gonna... Uh, that's a whole different level of weird. Can you shit in my bed? Uh, no thank you. I would rather not shit in your bed, thanks. First of all, that would imply I'd have to be around you, so... Let's just uh, not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Cillian, when he does drama, when he does comedy, it's Silly Ann. Actually, I take that back. The reason why we'll never get a good comedian to host an award show again is not because of Will Smith. It's because of Ricky Gervais, Ugh. who unleashed an. Kill? And I mean this with sincerity off the medium of late night television. All right? Because late night television is not written by the comedians that they get to host the late night television. It's written by some of the worst fucking writers in the history of, 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 of funny. It's like so unfunny. Shut up! It's so unfunny that it's just not okay. Will Smith's husband, he lost it. Look, the bottom line is people are, people are without hair. You see him all the time, Will Smith's husband. <laughs> you can see it in his face, he's holding it back. <laughs> he lost it. He lost it. Onslaught of savage roasts and jokes towards the guests, sponsors, so and even the, the networks who host these events. Ricky exposed Hollywood so badly at the 2020 Golden Globes that no organizer will dare set themselves up to get decimated like that again. Yeah, they will. Ricky Gervais is a British comedian who is known to Guy's push the boundaries team. with extremely edgy material. Like Politics, social issues, race, religion. There is absolutely nothing Ricky won't joke about. If people thought that Good. Kevin Hart's material pushed the boundaries, really? Ricky makes Kevin look like a comedian Kevin's for like children. A, so how he Kevin's was able to host the Golden tame. Globes five times is pretty insane. The first time he hosted was in 2010, and yes, he was still a savage back then. As soon right. as he stepped on stage, he He's started attacking Steve I don't know anything Steve about Carell. him. You probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell, did you? Oh, oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? <laughs> he's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? If you don't know, Ricky Gervais created a British comedy show called The Office in 2001, four years before the American version. Ricky's yeah. show only lasted one season, but is filmed the exact same way. No music, long awkward pauses, deadpan humor, semi-realistic but also extremely unrelatable chaos in the work environment. The premise of the show is the exact same, and only diehard fans of the American version would argue how it's different. Ricky, like the savage he is, goes on to promote his version of the show, as well as roasting the network hosting the event or if you think that particular version of the show has jumped the shark a little bit then um watch the original fridays on adult swim oh. or get the box set that's still available who has so, cable uh, go and get that um i will be making the most of this opportunity i'm not used to these sort of viewing figures <laughs> let's face it nor's nbc so he then goes on to belittle actors' value to the world. Notice how they almost clap for themselves. It is an honor to be here um, in a room full of what I consider to be the most important people on the planet. Actors. They're just, they're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? They're, 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 we all know that. Um, imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if they ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, lawyers or doctors. Can you imagine a real surgeon doing what Hugh Laurie does in-house? It would be pathetic. <laughs> it 
going, oh, where do I stand? What was my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know? Hugh Lowry did not he liked like that it. joke. No, he Another did. Another celebrity like he not very fond of Ricky's jokes was Mel Gibson. Mel has struggled with alcoholism okay, since Gibson he was 13 years old. He is also known fair. in Hollywood to be pretty outwardly anti-Semitic. In 2006, he got arrested for a DUI and then proceeded to blame Jews for all the wars around the world before threatening the police officer. So Ricky had to take a jab. Uh, I think uh, Mel Gibson does not know anything about all the wars around the world, uh, so <laughs> I think he maybe needs to learn a little bit about history, because that is the most stupid fucking tape I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, uh, he has no idea about, like, small countries having wars with each other that have been going on for, like, uh, at all. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> what is? <laughs> yeah, 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 it's all a conspiracy. <laughs> I, I didn't mean it's not my fault. There's a lot of powerful people here, so if I said I, it's <laughs> honestly, I'll go all this I like to drink as much as the next man, <laughs> unless the next man. It's Mel Gibson. <laughs> Ricky's comments throughout the night felt distasteful to many around the world, but numbers don't lie, and he drove NBC's ratings through the roof. The 67th annual Golden Globe Awards presents NBC with its biggest non-sports viewership in the slot in six years. Whoa. The Golden Globe Awards gains 12% in adults 18 to 49 and 14% in total viewers Started, versus what the last fuck year's does that telecast. Even mean so he was invited back again the next year. Oh, how so does he look nominated. younger this year you than the other? Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. <laughs> um, oh. oh, it's the Kanye meme. I remember now. Uh, I'm still Probably. learning the memes. Thank you. I'm still learning. My lawyers helped I'm me with learning. the wording of that joke. Ricky set the tone for the night that 2011 would be even crazier than 2010, immediately attacking the nominees, specifically The Tourist, which was a 2010 film led by Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie that was nominated for Best Motion Picture. Oh, it Johnny Depp looked uh, pretty movies, good in there too. Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. No, he didn't get like banned. I was just trying to figure out what the fuck he was talking about. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I don't get it because I never watched I'm it. I'm jumping on the bandwagon because I haven't even seen The Tourist. Yeah, Who see? Has? Um, but yeah, no. see? The Tourist I mean, was notoriously a terrible yeah. movie and many wondered why it was nominated in the first place. Well, if you understand how Golden Globes are chosen, it might make a bit more sense. Explain. The Hollywood Foreign Press is a voting body of about 90 journalists that determine who gets nominated and wins the trophy. Journalists... To get into the HFPA, you must write for a foreign publication but live in Los Angeles. It's no secret what? that members of the HFPA like to use their status to mingle with celebrities. It's like if I had a real vote on who wins a Grammy and I started hitting up rappers to have dinner with me. They might entertain ah, it because theoretically I could help them win an award. I so see. you will notice Ricky often says the Hollywood foreign press is corrupt. Yeah, that sounds it pretty It must corrupt. be good because it's nominated. So shut up, okay? <laughs> and I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumor going around. He's breaking the, the fourth wall. The people don't want was nominated to be broken. Was so the Hollywood foreign press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. <laughs> Ricky also had to take more shots at Mel Gibson. Yo, true. Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. <laughs> and of course he had to dig into Steve Carell some more. Oh, shit. He was a jobbing actor. Career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest. Who who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. So he He's now leaving him. that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. It's important to know that Ricky doesn't actually have hard feelings for Steve. Yeah, nobody they are both that. in on the joke and love yeah. to play up the bit. It's yeah, funny, he always makes fun of me, always. Um, and he, he's, he's also, you know, per, in a personal way, been very, very sweet to me. Like, before one of these awards shows, he pulled me aside and said, hey, I've got a few things that I wanted to go after you with, is that okay? And I'm like, of course. And so he's, 
There is a side, there is a, a gentler side to him that people don't necessarily so see. He's, he's such a lovely man, though. But he uh, thinks you're sweet because, just to clarify, you go up to him before an award ceremony and say, I'm going to call you a prick in a minute, <laughs> just to <laughs> warn you. But if, uh, I told him what I was going to say. You know, if I had access to them, I'd warn everyone. Some people yeah, just don't like the idea of a person idea. being the butt of someone's joke. That's nice. So they definitely wouldn't like this stray that Sandra Bullock caught at the end of the night. The oh, next no. presenter is a national treasure. Miss Congeniality herself. This down to earth girl next door first stole our hearts as a bus driver and then Isn't as she a the prostitute? fare collector. Now, of course, she wouldn't be seen dead on public transport because as she just said to me backstage, poor people are gross and they smell bad. Please welcome <laughs> Sandra Bullock. Surely, after these attacks, he wouldn't be brought back to host the 2012 awards. After all, the Hollywood Foreign Press did not want him back. With one member really? stating, My worry no was way. that he was insulting. And when I invite someone to my house, they don't insult me. But this is show business. I guess I'm old fashioned. No but way, they didn't want him after that joke too. <laughs> because the ratings were just as good as they wow. were last year, with 17 million live viewers for the entire show. Woo. So they decided to bring him back for a third year. And he was third as unhinged as ever. Ever, opening with lines that proved he could care less about this special evening. Tonight, you get Britain's biggest comedian hosting the world's second biggest award show <laughs> on America's third biggest network. <laughs> Sorry, is it That's four? Good. It's four. For any of you who don't know, the Golden Globes are just like the Oscars, <laughs> but without all that esteem. The first presenter he brought up was Johnny Depp and he called back to his previous joke last year about his movie, The Tourist. Have you... Ready? I, I guess so. Have you seen The Tourist yet? <laughs> <laughs> Have you? Uh, uh, no. The only thing you should do is just say, The lead actor of a movie that was nominated for no, a Golden a Globe, admitting that he didn't even watch his own movie the following year, says just, just about joking. everything you need to know about the value of these awards. Celebrities, like Elton John, have had enough of Ricky's nonsense. Even Ricky wrote on his blog after the event, I've told my agent to never let me be persuaded to do it again. But then 2016 came around and Gervais was made an offer he couldn't refuse. He it's tweeted, I'm making a list, I'm checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Hashtag Golden Globes. Ricky genuinely <laughs> believed he would never be back, so he made the 2016 Golden Globes his most diabolical performance ever. One more he he he. Shut up. You disgusting <laughs> we know a little sexual deviant scum. We get into a little tomfoolery. <laughs> and then go into hiding. Ricky kept reassuring everyone in the crowd he would be nice this evening. He was lying. <laughs> I am going to be nice tonight, and I'll tell you why. The president of the Hollywood Foreign Press just told me that if I say anything offensive or crass or resort to innuendo, he is going to come out here and personally pull me off. So that's an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that is the level. An old man pulling me off. And then again insinuated <laughs> that this award show was a corrupt. typical Hollywood experience One of a man pulling you up. said that me hosting would mean that some film stars would stay away for fear of being made fun of. As if film stars would stay away for the chance of winning a Golden Globe. Particularly if their film company has already paid for it. Everyone is clapping and laughing because they know it's true. Ricky continued to just minimize and bash the award show every which way he could. All female remakes are the big thing. There's a female remake of Ghostbusters. There's going to be a female remake of oh. Ocean's Eleven. And this is brilliant for the studios because they get guaranteed box office results and they don't have to spend too much money on the cast. So... Oh, that's a good-ass joke. Shut up. I don't That's care. so true. If you do win... You know what? That's a fucking... That's a banger of a joke. And if you think that joke is anti-women, you're actually wrong. Because he's pointing out a discrepancy within Hollywood that women get paid less than men. So honestly, that was a banger of a joke. All right, that wasn't a that wasn't a hate on women. Night, remember, but that's no a that's a banger. Okay, that stop calling me a nerd. Okay. <laughs> stop calling me a nerd. Nobody thought Don't that. Get emotional. Yeah, well, it's they're stupid. Embarrassing. Okay. Oh wait. That it's award nervous. is no offense, worthless. <laughs> 
It's a bit of metal that some nice old confused journalists... I'm dented, I'm dented, yes. ...wanted to give you in person so they could meet you and have a selfie with you. Honestly, there is nothing more I can say to add to this. Eva Longoria and America Ferreira aren't just beautiful, talented actresses. Yeah. They're also two people who your future president, Donald Trump, can't wait to deport. <laughs> but I'm sure you can oh. tell the energy of this show feels different than previous years. The first three shows he hosted, he was more playful, often chuckling to himself devilishly. But this show, he seems more fed up and actually just trying to be blunt. Oh, this show is way too long, isn't it? It's way too, this could be half an hour. Okay, let's get through it. Right. And that Unbelievable. Some people still think this award means something. The winners, just listen to me. Listen, it doesn't just... Right. When Brad and Angelina see our next two adorable little presenters, they're going to want to adopt them. <laughs> Please welcome Kevin Hart and Ken Jeong. And for some reason, the producers decided it would be a good idea for Ricky to introduce Mel Gibson, who he had previously attacked multiple times, and this time would be no different. Listen... I'm sure it's embarrassing for both one. of us, okay? And I blame NBC for this terrible situation. Mal blames... We know who Mal blames. <laughs> <laughs> Mal's forgotten all about it, apparently. That's what drinking does. No. I want to say something nice about Mal before he comes out. Um, so, oh yeah, okay. Here you go. I'd rather have a drink with him in his hotel room tonight than with Bill Cosby. <laughs> Please welcome, Mel Gibson. <laughs> Yo! All the I know about Harvey Weinstein celebrities are angry. The is a, is a, you know when there is like that video that resurfaced of uh, Harvey Weinstein like begging that girl to come back to his room or something. That was so, it was so so fucking funny. I don't know. I I know that I shouldn't say that, but he it was like him just uh, absolutely be P please come back, please come back to my room, please. Like a fucking <laughs> it was so stupid. I, I was angry. like this guy's a Mel fucking Gibson loser. Is angry. Ricky Gervais <laughs> is never coming back until 2020 where they asked oh. him to host for the fifth time. Again. People were shocked. Ricky was shocked. And if we thought his 2016 show was yeah, direct but he's also and less a, playful, a, a 2020 felt like he did not tell one joke, but rather just statements of how much he hates Hollywood. You'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards. So That's what he says every year. I don't care anymore. Um, I'm joking. I never did. Um, NBC clearly don't care either. Fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. Yeah. Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. <laughs> he immediately set the stage that he would go out with a bang, and timbers were shivered. People from every background, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. Who? He's coming for you. He's coming for you. I don't know who that is. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year. It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, leaving Neverland, two popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. Ronan Farrow is the son of Woody Allen, who became a journalist and led the charge in exposing Harvey Weinstein for oh! his decades of sex crimes inside the film industry. Let's go! Um, what a Potter's guy! Away, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. Oh, oh beast! I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> you had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? Right. Tom Hanks didn't like that one. Many talented people of colour were snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So. <laughs> it baffles me how most of Ricky's harshest roasts since 2010 were towards the organizers of the event, and they still hired him five times. But the ending of his monologue was not a joke. So, if you do win an award tonight, 
Don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and f*** off, OK? <laughs> His wit and his charm we saw in previous years was no longer present. He had used it all up. Our next Wait, presenter stars why is he saying he's not witty? Bird Box, a movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. Oh! You did it. You, I didn't. You did it. Shut the f*** up. That's witty as fuck. Fans absolutely loved Ricky's direct attacks on the privileged class. These harsh jokes are likely the most adversity they had to face all year. Classically, journalists hated his performance. Rolling Stone said, The host's shtick at the 2020 Golden Globes felt incredibly stale. Salon said, Why the Golden Globes and host Ricky Gervais felt particularly pointless. Variety said, But most of the time, his stand-up seemed lazy. Which is true. It was kind of lazy, because it didn't seem like he was joking. But hey, if these celebrities are going to congratulate themselves over a dozen times per year with superficial awards and trophies, then they need a comedian <clears> to humble <throat> them. But I think we can all agree that the real winners are these are always the fans That's who what get, they get to laugh to and do. reminisce on the comedic like chaos that ensued at the expense of multi-millionaires.